The current outlook for the NHL trade deadline is shaping up to be pretty hectic league-wide. We've seen some trade requests not only trickle through this season, but also some big names hitting rumor mill as of late. In this video, we're going to go over some players that could very well be moved this deadline and where they may end up. And with that, here are four NHL players who will most likely be trade bait this coming deadline and where they may end up. The most recent disgruntled player to surface in the media is Habs defenseman Jeff Petrie. After having a rough go of it this season, things quickly came to a head between Petrie and his team here recently. Following the altercation that took place between netminder Sam Montebo and Zach Cassian, Petrie was given a lot of backlash for not standing up for his netminder thereafter. And unsurprisingly to most, Petrie had been stripped of the A on his sweater by the time the next game on the schedule came around. Now apparently for Petrie, things haven't been easy on ice or off of it for that matter. With a family far away in Michigan, in attempts to avoid the strict Canadian regulations, Petrie let it be known that his intentions are to be elsewhere at this point. With just 6 points and 37 games played, the defenseman is on track unfortunately to have his worst season since 2014-15. Currently sporting a $6.25 million AV for 3 more seasons, Petrie will be having a say in where he ends up due to a modified no trade clause. Meaning that in his case, he'll be able to submit a 15-team no-trade list if he hasn't already. Newly appointed GM Kent Hughes spoke formally on the matter while saying, quote, In the case of Jeff Petrie, if we can find a deal that is good for the club and good for him, yes, we will trade him. At this point, all options are on the table, end quote. Knowing of his struggles paired with his cap hits, it will be interesting to see where Petrie will be moved. Obviously, the number one team that sticks out is the Detroit Red Wings. His father, Dan, interestingly, was an MLB pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, and as I mentioned, his wife and kids are residing there as well. If Steve Eiserman and company did show interest in the defenseman, it would be a much easier city for Petrie to play in hypothetically. Not only would the glaring Montreal spotlight not be on him, but he wouldn't be expected to be the number one defenseman going in. Up and comer Moritz Sider will be the Wings' number one blue liner for many years to come, but could benefit from some veteran leadership that Petrie would bring. With Philip Sedina reportedly on the block for Detroit, veterans Mark Stahl and Nick Letty still being pending UFAs, there could be a prospective move here in the making. The Dallas Stars have also been linked recently to Petrie by Pierre Lebrun, as he believes Klingberg could be of interest to Montreal. Things in the Lone Star State continue to be uncertain for the Dallas Stars. Currently on the outside looking in, I'm on the outside. Yes, I had to do that. The team is under threat of missing the postseason entirely. With that being said, if Dallas doesn't heat up soon, Jim Neal would be smart to listen in on offers for the slew of pending UFAs on the Stars roster. Anton Kadobin and John Klingberg are a couple of names that we've already discussed, but one that's emerged here recently is veteran Joe Pavelski's. After making his way over from the Bay Area, Pavelski has proven to be aging like fine wine for Dallas. The forward, who's currently on more than a point per game pace, has 48 after 43 contests with 14 of those being on the man advantage. At 37 years of age, Pavelski is set to hit the free agent market due to his three-year, $21 million contract expiring this offseason. Dan Rosen, writer on NHL.com, believes that one team that should be targeting him, if not already, is the New York Rangers. Rosen believes that a forward with a right-hand shot who has the ability to contribute on the power play could be appealing to Chris Drury and company. Not only would Pavelski be an ideal fit, but the blue shirts already have the caps face to potentially sign him as well. If salary was initially retained in the deal, it'd be a win-win for the Rangers as they anticipate a lengthy postseason run. Another team that's been skating on middle ground this season is the Vancouver Canucks. While the team won't exactly be competing for Shane Wright, they're not guaranteed to make the playoffs either. With new leadership now in the mix NBC, it's looking increasingly likely that we'll be seeing some major changes made at the deadline and potentially the offseason as well. At the forefront of the trade chatter is a player that we've touched on previously in JT Miller, and for good reason. But recently, NHL insider Elliot Friedman gave us reason to doubt Miller's departure by saying, quote, My sense is that part of Vancouver's thought process includes the possibility of re-signing JT Miller, not trading him. 
I'm not saying that's the likely outcome, but at the very least, they've investigated the idea and what it would take. That's one reason other names like Connor Garland are out there." End quote. And according to Boston Hockey Now, the Bruins were in on Connor Garland initially, when he was being shopped alongside Oliver Ekman Larson. The Massachusetts native has recorded 24 points in 41 games played thus far for the Canucks. Garland is currently finishing up the first season of his five-year $24.75 million contract that carries an AAV of $4.95 million. For Garland, however, Boston isn't the only team reportedly interested. According to Friedman, the Rangers and Devils have also shown interest. As far as Boston is concerned, the thought of inserting Garland into the lineup who can play at either wing with a right-handed shot has to be pretty enticing for Don Sweeney. As for Garland himself, well, he almost alluded to it last time that former teammate Taylor Hall was in town. You miss, you miss me as your bumper. After the standings in the Eastern Conference began to appear more concrete, Flyers longtime captain Claude Giroux found himself consistently in trade talks throughout NHL media. While I did touch on the Giroux situation in a previous video, I thought considering the amount of chatter around him, we briefly revisit his dilemma. At 34 years of age, Giroux has been and will go down as being one of the best players to have ever played for Philadelphia. But as most of us know, the Flyers aren't close to contending for a Stanley Cup this postseason. In result, the team has made it known that if Giroux wants to pursue Lord Stanley since he is a pending UFA, they would arrange it and be accommodating. Among the slew of teams we've heard as suitors for Giroux have been the Colorado Avalanche, Minnesota Wild, Calgary Flames, and more recently, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Since the departure of Zach Hyman, the Leafs have been in need of an offensive jolt on the left side. Drew could find himself hypothetically filling in there or centering the third line. Kyle Dubas, who will be definitely in the spotlight more so this season than ever, would be smart to try and solidify three solid lines for the postseason. Drew is known as a face-off machine and a 200-foot player. Also, Toronto has had a trend recently of bringing in grizzled vets in the offseason and the deadline. Last spring, for example, we witnessed Nick Foligno embarking on his short stint with the team. While Dubas is wanting to solidify the right side on the blue line, bringing in Giroux as a rental would be a smart way to add depth up front without giving up too much in return. 